<sighs> what is going on, you scoundrels? Welcome back to another Northeast Outdoors video. Today, I'm gonna be talking about everything to do with jigs, best times of year to throw them, where you should be throwing them, what types of jigs to throw, how to retrieve them, anything you could ever want. Now I'm gonna leave chapters in the timeline so you can skip to whatever you may need. However, I do suggest watching this whole video because I'm gonna be throwing in random tips and tricks all over this video. I also have some cool underwater footage to show you guys. I'm gonna be overlaying some footage of me fishing from today so you can actually see how to use these techniques and what I'm actually talking about instead of just looking at me sitting in this car and talking to you all day. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now when I'm making this, it is mid-April, which is probably the best time here to be throwing jigs. I throw jigs year round, but probably the best time to throw them is around here because at this time is about when the crawfish will be starting to emerge from their winter slumbers. So it'll kind of be a primary feeding source for bass or really anything that swims in the water. They eat a lot of crawfish. So if you throw something that imitates what they're already eating a ton of, you can't really go wrong with it. Another reason why you should probably be throwing jigs, especially even year round, you can fish them around some really heavy and dirty cover that normally you wouldn't even be able to fish. Say if you're pulling up to a lay down, there's a huge tree that just fell into the water. You can take that jig and flip it into probably each individual branch and cover every single slot of that tree. And it's a very good way to be able to cover a lot of water where there's a lot of cover and not lose 20 lures while you're doing it. Now I'll dive into the setup that I usually use for this. Right here, I got my old Shimano DC on here. It's a Scorpion. Um, the reel doesn't matter a ton. However, it does help a lot to have a low gear ratio on a bait caster. And that is because when you have this jig into a thick log or tree, you're gonna really need to horse that fish out of there before it tangles you around whatever branches or hang ups they got down there. So having a low gear ratio bait caster is going to give you that leverage. You're gonna be able to use more of your power just to crank this thing. That's gonna allow you just to really power that fish up out of whatever dirty stuff he's in. Under the rod, I got a St. Croix Bass X. It is 7.4, heavy power, fast action. This will handle all of your largemouth bass. I don't think you're gonna catch a largemouth bass that's gonna dog you on this rod unless you're catching a 25, 26 pound world record. And I don't think many people are doing that, so this will do just fine. Heavy power is definitely a necessity. Medium heavy is probably definitely the lowest I'd go for a jig rod. You really want a long rod to be able to get those casts out there. It's also gonna give you a ton more leverage on your hook set and lifting that fish up out of any trees, hangups, whatever they're down in there. So make sure you have at least a seven foot rod. You can get away with it, but it's not gonna be easy on you. Now for my line, I always use 40 pound braid. You don't need a leader. Um, I find that when you tie in a leader, it's just something else that you have to tie on and it's something else that can break. I usually just tie straight braid to my jig. I've never really had issues with fish committing to the jig. When you're running green or any natural color braid, it's gonna blend right into whatever water you're fishing, right into the bottom. And they're not even really gonna pay attention to it. They're gonna be looking at what they think is a crawfish and say, hey, that's a nice meal. And then they're gonna get a hook right in the face because you outsmarted them. What this is, is spider wire Invisibraid. It's white. Once you cast it around enough and you run it through all the muck, it gets the first probably yard or so of the line, like whatever color the bottom is. And it works pretty good. It blends well into the bottom. I do like it. I think uh, spider wire has outdone themselves here. Now the types of jigs I'm gonna be covering are the types of jigs you're gonna be flipping into heavy stuff or casting into heavy stuff. Um, I like to run finesse jigs. I find that a heavier finesse jig is a lot more versatile than a lighter casting jig. And that's just because it's a smaller profile you get a lot more fish on it. It's gonna give you a lot better of a handle of what you're doing is right. So if your technique's off a little bit and you're not catching anything at all, then you'll know a lot faster than if you're only fishing for like 10 pound bass. You won't even know the whole time. And plus you'll catch more fish like this. And who doesn't like catching fish? I mean, come on. Now the finesse and flipping jigs, usually use these in any circumstance where you're gonna be throwing them into like down trees that have all the branches coming off of them. Usually you're gonna be pretty close to that tree and you're just gonna flip every pocket. That's where these jigs really shine and that's when you should tie them on. Football jigs I don't really use, but I'm pretty sure you wanna throw those around rocky cover. Any type of open water that 
doesn't really have a ton of laydowns. It's just a bunch of boulders and stuff. That's where football jigs will do pretty good. Now, as far as jig trailers go, this is pretty much what I've been using. Um, any type of cross soft plastic is gonna work pretty well. I'll show you how I feed this thing on real quick. Now you got your fresh soft plastic out of there. Usually when you have a craw, they're gonna have the tail connected. Make sure you break that real quick. You're gonna take your jig, hold it upside down, kind of wiggle it around a little bit. And you get all of the, the skirt folded around it. Now what you're gonna wanna do, take your soft plastic. You want the hook to come out around this last rivet right here. So if you hold it up to it, measure it against here, you can see about right here is where you want it to be to come out right at the end of it. So from there you take this, bite it off, wherever you just measured it to, press that weed guard down, feed this on, then obviously you measured it, so you just bring it right to the end, pop it out at the tail. And there you go, perfect trailer every time. I like to bring it all the way to the end of the soft plastic when I'm putting trailers on, because I like to keep my presentation pretty small. Crawfish aren't all that big, and the big bass will also eat this, so you don't need to throw a huge one ounce bass jig catch big bass I mean they'll eat this stuff too now bass jig is probably the most versatile of the baits you can fish it with a lot of different techniques which is what I'll start talking about now uh, my favorite is flipping this is when you're like 10 20 yards away from a big lay down some type of some type of structure in the water you're just taking it taking your jig pitching that thing over there this is my favorite just because especially at this time of the year like early spring since the weeds aren't fully developed, they're gonna be really hugging tight to any type of structure that's in there, like logs, trees, any type of that stuff. Just because that's the only kind of cover they're gonna be able to find since there's no lily pads formed or anything. So really key in that on that type of stuff. And that's why I think flipping is so productive at this time of year. And even if it's not early spring for you and you're watching this, they're still gonna love hanging around logs, twigs, any of that type of stuff. So never overlook those. Those are my favorite spots to fish. Flipping is just you take your jig, flip it around whatever structure you got. I try and work almost every piece of whatever structure I'm fishing. Like if I have a, a log laying down, I'll fish the left side, I'll fish the right side, and I'll make sure my jig has seen pretty much the entire length of whatever log it is. Because you never really know exactly where the fish are gonna be sitting on whatever structure they got. Now another technique I use somewhat often is dragging. And that's just when maybe you're shore fishing, you got a ton of water to cover and not a ton of structure to really key into. So you just take your jig, hum it out in the middle of whatever body of water you're fishing. You just take it, drag your rod tip, that's it. Drag it all the way, reel it in, give it a second. Keep dragging again, reel it in, give it a second. You just keep doing that. We're gonna move into the bite detection because honestly fishing with a jig is a lot different than fishing with like a Sanko, a Ned Rig, or any type of moving bait because since you're gonna be throwing this into a lot of heavy cover, you're gonna be hitting a lot of logs and rocks and everything that could be mistaken for bites. And if you're setting the hook on every single one of these, you're gonna be losing a lot of time, you're gonna be disturbing a lot of fish, and you're probably gonna be losing a lot of jigs. So here's my tip for you for bite detection. If you're not moving your rod at all, like you have your rod completely still, and A, you feel a tap. If you are if you hold your rod, have your friend like just tap the rod tip. That's a good indication on what you should be able to feel when a bass hits it. Or, a lot of people don't do this, but I find it pretty useful. Once your jig is on the bottom and the line stop moving and it's just laying flat on the surface, if you see your line jump or like a really quick vibration, that's usually a good indication of a fish. And if you want an example of this, just cast your line out, let your jig sink to the bottom, have your line be flat on top, and just do the same exact thing, tap your rod. And your line will kind of twitch. And that's what you want to look for when you're fishing. But that doesn't work all the time because if you do a really slight movement, the same thing will happen to your line. It'll look like you got a bite. So make sure that it's not your own error and that it actually was a fish that bit your line. Cause that's a good way to uh, 
just yank your jig out of the water for no reason. And like I said, the other thing that happens, sometimes you reel it in when you're about to give it a couple more pops and it'll be tension on the end of the line. What I usually do is I keep that tension for a couple seconds. If it's not moving at all, I'll give it a pop and usually it'll come out. It'll usually be a log or something and the jig will just pop right out of it. But other times you keep the tension up there and you'll kind of feel your rod tip moving a little bit or you can see your line start to swim. You'll feel some movement in your line and that is a good indication that that's a fish and that you should be ripping its head off. <laughs> now, great places to fish with a jig. Obviously, I've gone over a lot of the structure, twigs, logs, laydowns, any type of trees that have fallen into the water, rock piles in the middle of like a dirt, gravel, or like mush bottom. It's always a good place to key into any type of, uh, any type of transition, really. What bass or any type of predator fish will do is sit in a transition whether it be open water to a log, or say shallow water to deep water, or a rock in the middle of a bunch of dirt and mush. What they'll do is sit in these transitions and they'll use it as ambush points. Because say if you're just a fish swimming in shallow water and a bass is down here and you look up, that bass is, will be seeing you. You will not be seeing that bass because you're not looking down there. And that's another thing they really like to do. They like to sit at the bottom because bass, as predators, like to be under their prey. They like to attack upwards. So, if you keep all this in mind, fish those transitional periods where they already are, you'll be catching a lot more fish and wasting a lot less time just casting in open water for no reason. So I covered a lot here in a very short amount of time, but my number one tip for you guys overall is to just get out there, tie a jig on your rod, and get some experience fishing with jigs. The only way you're gonna get better at anything is just by getting out there and doing it. You're not gonna get any better sitting here watching videos. It'll give you an idea of what you need to do. However, the only way you're gonna get better at doing this stuff is if you get out there on the water and experience it. So that's what I encourage all you to do. Within the next seven days, get out there, spend a whole day just casting a jig around, maybe go to a couple different ponds, bodies of water, fish different structures, all different rock piles, logs, trees, all that stuff that I talked about today. Fish all that different stuff. Get some experience on detecting bites, getting fish to commit to your jigs, using the different techniques of retrievals. Get out there and do it. That's the only way you're gonna be able to learn. Now, I hope this video is helpful for you guys. I'm sure I yapped quite a lot <laughs> and uh, probably covered a couple things many times over, however, I do still hope it was helpful for you. If it was, consider leaving a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I put out new content twice a week and I always listen to what you guys want. Occasionally, I'll put out a video for myself because I want to have fun. <laughs> no, I love making videos for you guys that are actually helpful or that are actually entertaining to all of you at home. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>